Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 774, Chaturgatihi. Chatur means four, and Gati means goal is a prominent meaning. Um, and Sri Parasha Bhatta says that the name Chatur Gati He refers to Vishnu being the path, the way to achieve all the four goals desired by his devotees. But he doesn't specify what the four goals are, which makes us think that out of his kindness, he has given something for his subsequent uh, followers in disciplic succession to elaborate on that, which, of course, they do. Uh, one obvious understanding, he, he is in the form of the four purusharthas, dharma, artha, karma, and moksha. He, is, he gives this, or, or that will come in, in, in another name just coming up. He's the giver of the four goals. But he is that personality. He is that ultimate truth who is ultimately to be searched out for. In, uh, and that will come to, in, the, in, in an upcoming name, Chatur Veda Vit. You see, the, all the names there are overlaying and underlapping and intertwining meanings. So I, I won't get into that just now, but um, the goal of all the Vedas, which after all the four Purusharthas of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, that's all based on the Vedic knowledge, although the Mimangsakas will say this Moksha, forget Moksha. We're interested in Dharma, Artha, and Kama, not Moksha. And then the, the, the Mimangsakas, the the Purva Mimangsakas and the Uttara Mimangsakas or the Vedantins will say, no, no, moksha, moksha, that's the real thing. But whatever it is, see that the ultimate goal is, is not Dharma per se, not Artha per se, uh, money, not Karma per se, although desire for serving Krishna is very good, and not moksha per se. And that might surprise most of the Vaishnavas also when we say moksha is not the ultimate goal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishna Bishaya Prem Param Purusharta Jaragi Trina Tulla Chari Purusharta. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that love, specifically love, in, centered on Krishna, the, the object of whom is Krishna. That is the highest purusharta. Purusharta means the meaning of life, the meaning of life for every living being. So the, the ultimate goal of life for every living being is love of Krishna, in comparison with which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jaragi Truna Tulla Chari Purusharta, in comparison with which the four goals which are considered, and you'll find again and again in Mahabharata and everywhere, these four goals of life, they're, they're really emphasized as what it's all about. Uh, dharma, yes, but, but, but why Yudhishthira wants to, why is he want to, why is he insisting to have a throne? Why? Not that he's interested, he explains, he's not, I'm not interested in for my own aggrandizement or in, but because I can't exercise my dharma as a kshatriya unless I have something to rule over. And then for, for a kshatriya, artha is required. We have artha shastra, uh, which um, that's a, a guidebook for kshatriyas and for brahmanas, uh, brahmanas guiding them on, on how to run the state. It's the Kshatriya's duty to see that the state is prosperous. People are living 
they have enough to get by with, and then karma, ka but and, and then ultimately moksha. But all of these they can be understood in terms of Krishna consciousness also. They can all be understood in terms of the param purusharta. In this way, the chatur gati, the four goals, they come ultimately to be the one goal. They can be understood in terms of Krishna consciousness, just like. Dharma Svanushita Pungsang Vishvaksena Katasuya Nodpadi Adyati Ratim Shrama Eva Hikevalam. If you follow Dharma uh, <clears throat> very nicely, but we don't get a taste for hearing about Krishna, then it's simply a waste of time. Savai Pungsang Paro Dharma Yato Bhaktir Hoksaja Ohaituk Yaprati Yata Yayatma Samprasidati. The ultimate goal of, or the highest Dharma. Uh, for all living beings, is that by which one attains to a pure, unmotivated, unceasing devotional service to the transcendent Lord. And there are many other statements in this regard regarding dharma. So dharma ultimately means for Krishna, to, to be Krishna conscious. That is the jiva sarup hoi krishna das the ultimate form or, or characteristic or nature of every living being is to be a servant of Krishna, which means his dharma. This, this, uh, this line from Chaitanya Charitamrita could have been rendered jiva dharma hoy, but then there might be some confusion that we may think, well, that's because dharma is executed in this world, it, it can change from life to life or from situation to situation, but swarup, Swarupena viva, and then we get to moksha also. Swarup, muktir hitvanya tarupam swarupena viva stiti. The the real definition of mukti is to give up all these temporary designated bodies and to be swarup, situated in one's original position, which Bhagavatam goes on to explain is in the service of Krishna. And karma, karma, Krishna, karma, pane. Uh, Narottam Das explains that this lusty desires which bind us in the material world, uh, if they're directed or, or offered in the service of Krishna, or, yeah, directed for Krishna's service, for Krishna's service, Krishna karma, then that is pure. And that that calm, that it simply means desire, but it's usually understood as material desire. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we hear about the uh, the gopis having karma for Krishna, mm -hmm. but that calm is synonymous with prem, pure love of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these uh, these four goals, or the the, the four purushartas, the four yeah, the four goals of of human life especially, they coalesce in the, the chaturgati. They all come to the ekagati, which is Krishna. They all come to the ultimate goal is Krishna. Then uh, another understanding is that people worship Krishna or Narayana for different aims and they can get them they can they people who worship to attain the post of indra they can get it and then even much higher is brahma and then there is impersonal absorption kaivalyam and moksha as liberation to vaikuntha for the sake of serving him so these he provides the four goals, and actually so many other goals, but these are four uh, highly rated goals to become Indra, to become Brahma, to get in personal liberation, and to get liberated for the sake of serving the Lord in Vaikuntha. Now, another meaning of Gati, completely different meaning from the goal of life, is, uh, or, not the goal, it can mean you can have a temporary gati also. Um, gati goal, and it also means path. But an, another meaning is 
gate g a i t gate how one's form of movement uh you can say someone is walking quickly with a fast gait or a, a, or a lethargic gait if someone is moving very slowly uh, in ramayana hanuman having found mother sita he describes lord just just to show because she was she was suspicious what is this she, naturally she's suspicious hanuman presents himself as a representative of rama but she's suspicious it must maybe one of ravana's tricks but hanuman described lord rama to her one of the descriptions he gave is that he is chatur gati and this is generally described uh, or this is understood by the commentators to mean one who has the four kinds of gates and these these kind of gates are particularly suitable for kshatriyas now we because every, everyone walks differently but even the same person may walk differently at different times just like if you i've got to get somewhere in, in a hurry i've got you know very fixed on something he's not not going to be distracted when he walks in a certain way with the intent uh, purpose to go there just fixed on that and then in another time he may be walking leisurely just uh, walking in the countryside enjoying the countryside so the different kinds of gait the same person may have and if we study uh very scrutinizingly we may find that each individual has their own individual gait altogether and if you want to get down to the uh to uh anatomy then you will find that the 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 pelvic joint and the the thigh bone are joined at a different mm -hmm. angle and and then the the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments mm -hmm. and they're all a bit different they're it's not exactly in the same place with everyone and even the way we put our foot on the ground it won't be at exactly the same angle for everyone so uh everyone has their own and and, and according to the mood there's the stai bhav of the person his general deportment or mentality mm -hmm. and then again different moods so everyone moves differently but there are categorizations of you see in, in the vedic knowledge everything everything is covered so the how a man these are particularly for men real men kshatriyas they're the real man types not the uh, arnold schwarzenegger type of man or rambo kind of man uh, very manly uh, but very yeah very strong um but their their manliness is for lording over ishvara bhava that's one of the symptoms of a kshatriya but the the very name kshatriya means one who protects one who protects from hurt so very lordly and uh very masculine kshatriyas they're very just like we we, see, we generally we think rajasthan the uh, men are very manly kind of uh, of course there are different kind of people there there are brahmanas in rajasthan also and the 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 uh, vaishyas come out of there but the rajputs and rajputs maybe in other parts of india also but especially the, the rajasthan that that state in british india was called rajputan the area of the raj so very proud by nature proud of their manliness and everything and they're very strong sturdy and uh very manly and again it, it doesn't mean just like uh, going around and bopping people and knocking them out it's a controlled strength for the benefit of others that's the that's the shatriyas nowadays i don't know rajasthan and anywhere everyone's become wimpish and 
Well, there are exceptions. But anyway, uh, talking about Lord, let's get back to Lord Rama, how he walks, the four kinds of gates. And they're all compared to animals and very strong animals. And, and very uh, animals that can be very dangerous to humans. Um, so the first one is Rishabhagati. Lord Rama walks with the walk of a bull full of pride and exaltation, just like a bull. He's very, very aware and big, strong bull. <laughs> Maybe you've seen uh, the, the bull becomes, uh, he's, he knows, he's, the, he's there among the cows. And, you know, he's big and he's strong. And he knows he's superior. And uh, they can be very dangerous for humans also. Angry, but very dangerous. Then Mata Gaja Gati, the, the, the gate of an elephant. Uh, and elephants, they generally walk in, in, a, in a measured way. And for a woman, actually, that's, that's also said that her gait is, is considered very, uh, very feminine if she walks like an elephant. But that's an, an, a female elephant walking in a way it's very uh, balanced and delicate. Uh, uh, but, the, but this is the Mata Gaja Gati, the in, infuriated elephant, maybe by intoxication or anger. And the way he moves is, is uh, he's maddened. Uh, or, or angry, or, or maybe by drink also. Elephants, they, they, they also, think that they can get intoxicated. In fact, the battle elephants, they used to be used for battle, they, they would get, they would uh, be given plenty of uh, rice wine or some other wine, uh, roughly brewed, especially for elephants. They'd drink that and then, just like when a man gets, uh, Intoxicated with alcohol, they often be, they, you lose your sense of discrimination. You become very courageous, even, uh, and you lose your sense of discrimination, which means that even crazily courageous. Uh, so that the, the elephant is very angry, and but it's also very lordly at the same time. His Majesty is there also. He's still. Uh, Still, the, he's, it's not just that he's some drunken slob. So Rama, he, he moves at different times. He may move with the Mata Gajagati. And another one, Vyagragati, uh, means the, the, the walk of a tiger. <clears throat> and again, a tiger can slink when looking for prey or, or just... Uh, but this particularly refers to the of an angry tiger when he goes. Uh, how that tiger moves. You wouldn't want to see. Sometimes people, sometimes people go to the zoo and they see a tiger, but if you, if you see in the forest, it used to be very common all over in, in most of India. The forests we, we find in the descriptions from the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, many, many forests and uh, tigers living in them up until recently. Now they're quite rare. We have in Bengal, Sundarban, beautiful forest. They're living there. Otherwise, you don't find, maybe in Assam, hardly you'll find tigers. Uh, <clears throat> so Lord Ram moves with the anger of an angry tiger. Maybe that's one reason people are more Krishna conscious. That's one reason people are more Krishna conscious, because there's really danger at every step. If you ever walk through the forest, uh, just like Braja Hari Prabhu in Juhu told me, he he used to walk to the forest. He had to go through the forest every day to walk to school. There weren't school buses. You may have to. Many of the kids they used to walk miles and miles every day to school. And he had to go through the forest, so he's af afraid of. Tigers. Was it Brajahari who told me that was one of those in glimpses of. So, um, 
he would he was told chant the name of Ram, so he chant the name Ram 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 on his walk. And then another Singhagati, the the walk of a lion, the, with great lordliness, very well knowing that well there may be elephants and tigers, but he is ultimately the king of the jungle, and. Uh, so Lord Rama can move in these different ways, or, or generally does move. When a kshatriya walks, just like you'll see someone who's there, they're in a high position and they're conscious of it, and they walk in a different way. They actually they walk in a different way to ordinary people. They're very aware of their of their uh, overlordship, and that others are looking up to them. Look, see, Srila Prabhupada, he, he walked like a king. He's, he said that I'm, I, uh, I'm just like a king. And then I, I, then I, I act like a king, he said, because I can never be defeated. So Lord Rama is, uh, has these four gates and the, the festival deity in Sri Rangam, he is carried on his palanquin and the gates, the, 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 by, the, by the way he's carried these four, during the festivals he's brought outside and he's the, the, these four different kinds of gates are uh, emulated by the car very expert carriers at different fixed stages in the fest in the f each fe well different festivals now another meaning he's the goal of the four the four goals or the goal of the four uh, shankaracharya takes the word a uh, goal for gati here and says that he's the goal of the four varnas and then another one for ashrams. So whichever ashram we're in, and nowadays in Kali Yuga, no one's properly following Varn Ashram. Srila Prabhupada wanted to reestablish that, of course. Uh, but although they have the, the four uh, Varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, the, their mentality and their activities are summarized by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. So although they're, they're very different people in many ways, if you see the, the, the Brahmana, his peacefulness is the first quality. And then Shamo uh, Dhamma, self-control, Tapa, Shocha. And for the uh, Kshatriya, we, we have Viryam, heroism. It's not the same as peacefulness. Heroism is, of course, there can be the heroism of a yogi who conquers over his senses. That's another kind of heroism. But uh, here, heroism, yudhe chapya palayanam. It's, it's heroism in the classic sense of the term, not running away from battle. And then Vaishya is very different mentality, uh, producing, money orientated, uh, in. And Shudra is also a very different mentality, but the goal of all of them is Vishnu. You should also always remember the goal. And, and for the ashrams, we, that's why in, uh, in Vaishnava understanding, although there's certainly a difference between Brahmachari ashram and Grihastha ashram and Vanaprastha ashram and Sanyas ashram, uh, if one is a Vaishnava, he shouldn't be considered in terms of Varna or ashram Primarily, although as long as one is not self-realized, one is fully self-realized. And even after that, in most cases, one will continue to follow one's uh, Varna roles, ashram roles. But we should know that a Vaishnava is transcendental to all of these. And we shouldn't judge them. We shouldn't think this is a Brahmana Vaishnava, therefore he's higher than a Shudra Vaishnava, because a Vaishnava is above all these roles, but according to 
the position he's in, the position ascribed to him, he, he plays a role in society. But really, uh, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, one is known as a Vaishnava according to his devotion. Nicha jati na hai Krishna bhajane o yoga. One is not disqualified, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, from being, uh, from worshipping Krishna by low birth. Nicha jati na hai Krishna bhajane o yoga. Shat, Shat ko vipra na hai bhajane yoga. Jai bhajay shai baro bhakta hina cha. Krishna bhajane nahik jat kuladi bicha. This consideration of whether one is high, high birth, low birth, uh, vana and ashram, they're not considered in, in bhakti. Now, considered in one sense from the social standpoint, but actually how much we're advanced in Krishna consciousness. It is not dependent on our, any external situation. Although, as long as we're in this world, we have to act within it. So we take some position within society, according to the Vedic understanding. So the four varnas and the four ashrams, the, the, the very brahmachari life is very different in many ways from Grihastha life, which is very different in many ways from Varnaprastha life. And in Varnaprastha life is very different from Sanyas life. And the roles of Brahmanas, Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras, they're all different. But the aim of all of them is Krishna. And therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami, Chari Barnashrame Jodi Krishna Nahe Bhaje, Shakama Karite Shei Rorave Parimaje. The followers of the Varnashram institution accept the regulative principles of the four social orders, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and four spiritual orders, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Varnaprastha, and Sanyas. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if one carries out the regulative principles of these orders, but does not render transcendental service to Krishna, he falls down into a hellish condition of material life. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's purport to this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, one may be a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya or Shudra, or one may perfectly follow the spiritual principles of Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas life, but ultimately one falls down to, into a hellish condition unless one becomes a devotee. Ultimately, you may say, what if you're a Brahmana, you become elevated, but ultimately you're going to fall down. Because as if we're not Krishna conscious, then we may get elevated by being a pure Brahmana. Or you can be elevated, that, that's the whole point of Varnashram, or, or the, at least the intermediate point, not the whole point. The whole point is to worship Narayana, as we're discussing. But the intermediate point, or, or the, the, the uh, bait on the hook, is you'll get elevated by properly following. If a Shudra follows his Shudra principles very well, He'll be elevated. You'll get a better birth. So it's true for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so one may be elevated, but, but ultimately one has to fall down because by the nature of this material world, one may be elevated and then you fall down. Nahush was elevated to the position of Indra. He fell down to the body of a snake because in this material world, there's always the possibility of making a mistake and material attractions are always there. So there's, one's not in a steady position unless one is fixed in service to Krishna. So ultimately one falls down. Continuing Srila Prabhupada's purport to this verse, um, without developing one's dormant Krishna consciousness, one cannot be factually elevated. It's, it's uh, just like in a prison. There may be different stories to the prison. So you get, you're in the ground floor uh, and then you get elevated to the third floor, but you're still in prison. So it's it's elevation in one stage, but the real thing is to get out of the prison. 
Then, Srila Prabhupada continues, the regulated principles of Varnashram Dharma in themselves are insufficient for attainment of the highest perfection. That is confirmed in the following two quotations from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 5, Text 2 and 3, Mukha Bahuru Padebhya Purushas Yashramai Saha Chatvaro Jagnire Varna Gunai Viprade Pritak. From the mouth of Brahma, the Brahminical order has come into existence. Similarly, from his arms, the Kshatriyas have come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come. And from his legs, the Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas, combine to make human society complete. Ya esham purusham sakshad atma prabhavam ishvaram if one simply maintains an official position in the four varnas and ashrams but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed up position into a hellish condition. So these two verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are uh, encapsulated in this uh, Short Bengali verse by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chari Barnashrami Jodi Krishna Nahi Bhaje. Shakama Karite Shei Rurave Pari Maje. Then another meaning of Chaturgati. This one is given by our own Gauriya Vaishnava Acharya, Dalade Vidya Bhushan. He is the refuge or the, the ultimate goal for the four kinds of. Uh, devotees or as they're described in uh, Bhagavad Gita by Krishna himself Sukriti, pious people that verse well known verse Chatur Vidha Bhajante Maranjuna Sukriti Naranjuna Arto Jignasur Artati Gyani Chabharatarshaba four kinds of people four kinds of pious people approach me Krishna says they start to do devotional service they are the distressed, the uh, desirous person who wants money, the inquisitive, and a person in knowledge. So he is the goal of all of them. They go to him. So in this way, he can be called Chaturgati. Another meaning that Baladev gives, uh, according to this, is that he has pastimes in the four abodes, Gokul, Rindavan, Mathura, and Dwaraka. So Gokul and Rindavan, they're both within Raja Mandal, and Krishna lived in both of those places during his um, appearance in this world. And then he went to, uh, went to Mathura and then to Dwaraka. And then again, the meaning is given of the four kinds of gates Sadhya Sandar Yati Raj. Ah, yes, he, he quotes that verse. Okay. Um, so, um, examples given of these four devotees this is coming from the Madhva commentary of these four kinds of devotees the Artha Jignasa Artati Jnani. Now, they give the examples of someone to get rid of their distresses there's a typo here it says diseases which should be distresses an uh, example is Gajendra to fulfill desire about the knowledge of God because there's Uddhava sometimes it's said that Uddhava he is a devotee great devotee Naivatma Yata Bhavan Krishna tells Uddhava that uh, I I I don't even love myself as much as I love you. Natata me priyatama atma yone na shankaraha. Ah, nacha sankarshano na shri naivatma chayata bhava. He says to Uddhava that, uh, well, Brahma is born from me. Natatana Priyatama Atma Yonin Shankara, my 
very dear, the greatest Vaishnav, yeah. Vaishnavanam, Yatha Shambhu. My brother, Balaram, Sankarshan, and even my wife, Sri, Lakshmi. I, and even my very self, I don't love as much as I love you, but Uddhava is classified among the devotees who had great knowledge. Uh, he, was, he was inquisitive to, to, to understand about Krishna, and therefore we have Uddhava Gita. It's different to Bhagavad Gita, in which Arjuna, he didn't want to be instructed in any philosophy. He just wanted to get out of the fight, that's all. Uh, and he offered some reasons. He didn't realize what he was getting himself into. He's, he's, he's trying to teach dharma to Krishna, and instead Krishna taught him dharma. But Uddhava was actually uh, very desirous to know, and therefore Krishna explained to him in detail. We'll find that in the Uddhava Gita. So he's counted as the Jignasu. One Jignasu literally means one who inquires, and Uddhava was, was inquiring from Krishna. And, and not just about bhakti yoga, but jnana yoga and the, the different siddhis that are so many things that, uh, you'll find in the Uddhava Gita. Then to obtain uh, wealth and kingdom and all this kind of thing, the example is Sugriva from Ramayana. And to uh, jnani, one who's in knowledge of God, is the example of Prahlad. He simply loved him. He got knowledge of God from Narada when he was in the womb of his mother, Kayadu, and he was just from the very beginning of his birth in this world, just completely in love with Krishna. Then another meaning given here by the Madhva Sampradaya is called Chaturgati because he bestows the four kinds of destiny or moksha. These are, uh, they're called the technical terms here. They are on uh, karmakshaya, which means the, the four, these are the four um, destinations. You can, or, or, actually, they're, they're, they're stages in the process of becoming liberated from this world. So karmakshaya, destruction of one's um, karmic reactions and karmic activities, involvement in material life. Then uh, uh, yeah, technically called this, this is derived from the Brahma Sutra. Um, Four phases described respectively in each of the four sections, four sections, four padas, four sections in the last chapter of the Brahma Sutra. So the first one is Karmakshaya, the destruction of all karma, including prarabdha. Then Utkranti, up and out, the exit of the soul from the gross and subtle bodies. Then Marga, uh, Marga Pada, the path toward the final destination, and Bhoga Pada, which means enjoyment in the spiritual world, in the four kinds of liberation. Um, and these, they say, these four correspond to Salokya, Samipya, Sarupya, and Sayuja. One can attain these four kinds of liberation, and they don't consider Sarshti having the same opulences of the Lord, which is a bit of a controversial point because they do accept Srimad Bhagavatam, which that is explained. But anyway, that's what we have. And that is Chatur Gati. Whatever we are doing, wherever we are going, keeping the, keeping the goal in mind. That was a saying of. Ah, uh, that seven habits, Stephen Covey, start with the goal in mind. So he, he distilled wisdom from many sources and he, he came up with some, some wisdom rules for people of the modern world. So one of his seven habits of highly effective people was start with the goal in mind. 
So whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, always remember our goal of life is Krishna. Wherever we may be a brahmachari, grihasta, vanaprastha, sannyasi, we may be a shudra, we may be a vaisha, we may be a kshatriya, we may be a brahmana, we may not be in any of these, from any of these backgrounds, just like myself coming from Western society. Uh, we should always remember that wherever we are, wherever we're doing, wherever we're going, we should know that we really want to go to the lotus feet of Krishna. So he is the goal of our life uh, in all times, places, uh, yatra sarvatra sarvada. Uh, our goal of life is Krishna, Chaturgati, Hare Krishna. Vanta kalpata rubhyas charki pa sindhu bihavija padita anam pavane pyo vaishnave pyo namo namaha. Dante nitaya churnakang padayoni patya kritvacha kaku shatameta da humbra vimi. Hey, sadhava, sakala eva vihaya, durat, goranga chandra charane kuruta nuragaha. Parivaditu jano yatata tava nanumukaro navayang vichara yamaha. Hari rasa madira madati bata bhuvi vilutama natama nirvishama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.